A lot of you guys wanted to know what I thought of the Batman film. Just saw it today. Took about a month. I was contemplating, but I knew I would see it. Saw it today. This will not be an in-depth review. Just my thoughts. And who am I? We all have our own opinions. And that's what makes this world... Whatever it is. <laughs> anyway. So, <clears throat> let me start out with the things that I really loved. Robert Pattinson surprised me. He did a great job as Batman. He was very dark as Bruce Wayne. He was this recluse, closed off, kind of cold, just perfect, right? Just good as Bruce Wayne. Just really, really good. He had a great look about him, distinguished. Just a great feel. As Batman, very good too. You know, how could you not be wearing a suit, right? Very raw, very stripped down version of Batman. And from what I understand, he's only been in the streets for a couple years, fighting crime. And people... They don't quite know who he is. Um, I believe he calls himself Vengeance, Catwoman, played by Zoe. I can't remember her last name. She kept re referring to him as Vengeance, I believe. Um, very good. So, um, it was good. Next thing that I noticed that I really, really loved was the cinematography and especially the dark look very film noir throughout. You know, like you've got certain scenes in certain movies, it looks dark, but then, like, see the, the next handful of scenes later, it's, like, bright outside and it's very colorful. I, didn't ca I don't care for that too much. If it's going to be dark, let's just make it dark. Like, the first Crow film with Brandon Lee, really, really done well. Batman to me had that feel. It was, it was, I almost want to say it was too dark looking, but that can never be a thing for me. So I loved the darkness. It was beautifully filmed. Cinematography, the angles, done really well. I really, really enjoyed that. What I didn't care for too much, no, let me add a couple more things that I liked. Um, I liked how Batman made a couple mistakes. If you haven't seen the film, there's going to be spoilers here or whatever. But I liked when he was escaping from the police station and, um, you know, he swings from his steel cable and all that. And he falls, hits against a semi or a truck or something, falls into the street and rolls away in pain. So he made a mistake. You know, you're so used to seeing superheroes do everything gracefully and just perfectly because they've practiced their craft. It was pretty cool to see that, oh, he makes mistakes. You know, that was pretty neat. Also, before he um, jumps off the building with his bat wing cape flying apparatus thing, um, he gets to the top and he doesn't realize how high he is at the top of the building and he stops short of the ledge and he's like, oh my God. You know, you can, he kind of freaks out a little bit. Batman wouldn't freak out about heights. It's just not how he is. Um, but, but since he's new to the craft, I suppose, that was pretty cool to see. Um, people were complaining about the Batmobile. It looks like a souped up Camaro, a black Camaro. Like you're watching a scene from Fast and the Furious. I'm okay with that. It's pretty cool. You know, he's just starting out. He picked up a Camaro from the local dealership and souped it up. That's cool. <clears throat> um, what else? Uh, Alfred was done well. Zoe was done well. The lighting was spot on. No pun intended. Um, what I didn't like was the length of the film. It was three hours long, two hours and 57 minutes. Some, let's just say three hours. Now, some films are three hours. They feel like two. This one, there were a lot of times where I felt like, all right, 
just can you be over already, you know? Let's, let's move it on, you know? Um, but when is something going to happen? And I heard from a, a few people, they said it, it takes a while to get started. It takes a long while to get started. Um, I would have done a lot more editing. There were a lot of bits that could have been chopped down. They kept them in. I mean, <clears throat> I don't know. It wasn't bad, but it was really slow. Like, it was kind of a mess. And, you know, I felt like parts of me were not even caring too much about the scenes. Like, and this has been said before by some other reviews I've seen where it's like so many different things are happening. And it's like, it, it almost seems like they were overlapping storylines not flashbacks, but it was just like kind of like it was pieced together incorrectly. Or let me rephrase it by saying certain clips could have been pieced together in different areas of the film and it would have made the same sense. Like it, it just there was really no rhyme or reason to how the film was put together. It was kind of like all over the place, messy. Basically, it felt like one big cop show that you see on TV that was three hours long. That's the perfect way to explain it. There was like, there was like no intro build, almost climaxing down, more storyline action, none of that. And usually a great film starts out with a killer intro to grab attention, right? Like the bank heist scene from The Dark Knight or Star Wars Episode 4 where the stormtroopers bust in and Vader makes his grand appearance. You're like, what the hell's going on, you know? Um, all superhero movies pretty much have that, right? Um, to start out with. This didn't. And the opening scene just kind of dragged on. And then all the scenes, like, it, it was a lot of dragging, okay? I didn't care for that. Anyway, um... Not much character development, so I, I found myself not caring too much for the characters, except Robert Pattinson uh, as Bruce Wayne. It didn't matter. You didn't need the backstory. You know the backstory. I don't... I wish they would have just given just a little bit of information on how, you know, Catwoman became Catwoman. I liked how she didn't have the perfectly crafted leather mask, you know, skull cap thing. That was cool that she did, like, the makeshift costume, like how Spider-Man always does. And then for some reason he gets, like, massive sewing skills and his costume looks awesome for the rest of the film. Like, if I was a superhero, my costume would look like crap, quite honestly, for the whole film because I can only sew a little bit. But I enjoyed how hers was kind of, like, makeshift, just like the Riddlers. Um, the Riddler character... Mm, no, I, I wasn't feeling it. I didn't feel very... Just a couple times, a little bit, I felt like a sense of... Uh, I don't know. It just... I just didn't feel like he was much of a threat, you know? I mean, he did a really good job. Um, especially at the end when they arrested him at the diner and he looked at Batman from behind the glass when Batman was standing outside of the diner looking at him from, you know, with the other cops and they locked eyes and they were doing a lot of communicating with those stairs. So that was done well. I liked that. What I found cheesy was when they took the Riddler away, they, you know, did that over the coffee cup shot and he had his, mocha cappuccino or whatever the riddler and it had like the symbol of a question mark in it eh, it's kind of cheesy to me but whatever um and then <clears throat> final thing i'll touch on is at the end in arkham asylum i heard that the joker was going to make an appearance and here's me thinking that it's going to be some guy Maybe filming, it would have been cool to have like a shot of slowly panning in um, with an armrest with like 
a purple velvet sleeve, and he talks a few phrases, you know, from his lair, you know, that would have been cool. But no, here's my take on it. It was a guy, the Joker, a young kid. I don't know who it was, but it sounded like Michael J. Fox. And I like Michael J. Fox a lot. It's not a dig against him. I'm just saying the voice sounded like Michael J. Fox. It was weak. It was a young kid. There was like zero effort put into whatever that was. You know, you've had, you know, Cesar Romero, one of my favorite Jokers. Jack Nicholson, of course, Heath Ledger. And then you get some guy with a soprano, higher type range voice. He sounded a lot like Michael J. Fox. Um, there was no sinister tone in his voice. There was no darkness. It was just some kid talking. No effort. That that was like whatever they were trying to do in that final scene, the bonding of them, it just failed. It, it just was not good. Um, speaking of bonding, I did enjoy the bonding between Catwoman and Batman. That was pretty cool. Um, they worked well together. My takeaways, I wish the storyline would have been pieced together and glued together a bit better. I wish certain scenes would have been cut shorter as far as editing goes. Um, I wish there was just a bit more backstory with Catwoman. Not where she sits down on the ledge and talks to Batman on the edge of a building about this whole, you know, five-minute spiel on how her life sucks and how she began Catwoman. That's not what I'm talking about. Because that's what most movies will do. Um, just like here and there, little glimpses of phrases or something to let her know, to let us know. What I did enjoy from the Riddler is how he's against the establishment, against the elite, um, because they're pretty much all evil. I'm talking politicians and everything else. Um, and how he was let down. And what he was talking about towards the end of the movie with Batman, where they had that, you know, typical, you know, villain talking to Batman thing. Um, I really enjoyed where the Riddler was saying to Batman, you know, oh, Oh, when your parents died, poor Bruce Wayne, poor Bruce Wayne. Do you know what it's like to really be an orphan when you're freezing and a, one of the babies dies every year from the cold and the rats are biting you while you sleep, being jogged from home to home, you know, stuff like that? That's an orphan. That's terrible. Not knowing if you're going to eat, maybe you get brought home to a foster home, you get beat, you get tossed around from house to house. But let's talk about poor Bruce Wayne, the rich, multimillionaire kid who lives in an ivory tower overlooking the park. That was powerful, that was good. But um, that's my take on it. I mean, they should have at least tried to have like a Joker voice. I mean, I'm not talking, do like... You know, Heath Ledger, like, ah, 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 which would have been cool. But, you know, just do something a little more sinister, like, you know, what, what could he have said to him? Like, let's say the Riddler said, you know, I failed or something like that. Um, the Joker could, I'm going to try not to do Heath Ledger's, but the, the Joker could have been like, fail. I guess. All right, fine. I'll do Heath Ledger's. Um, or I'll do a mix between normal and, and Ledger's. Fail. Why would you think you failed? You've just begun. You know, something like that. I don't know. All the people praising the Batman. You know, I mean, just... just you know, You get the idea. Instead, we get like... Hey, hey, I'm over here. I'm next to you. I'm in the cell right next to you. You didn't fail. Maybe he was a little more sinister than that. No, you didn't fail. You were fine. I don't know. It just, I didn't feel it. It wasn't villainous, you know? Anyway, that's it. Thanks for subscribing. I almost didn't want to do this because, again, who am I? 
Oh, there's the dogs. Dogs. Hey, dogs. Come, come here. Come here. Come. Ah, good boy. Well, until next time. Why so serious?